What is up everyone and welcome back to Near Replicant. I'm here today with the final ending, the E ending. This will be the last video on my channel for Near Replicant and I'm really sad about it, actually. I have loved this game from start to finish. I have absolutely loved it. I may not have fully understood it at all times, but I have absolutely loved this game. Now, between the last episode and this one, I've actually played a further four and a half hours, I think, to get to this point here. And apparently from here on, it changes, and this is where you now progress to the E ending. So what the heck is it gonna throw at me this time? So this is the bit where obviously you recruit Kaine, but we're not necessarily playing as Susie anymore. This is, how can I show you if I can? So I can't show you, but my new name is a boy, Susie. Because why not? <laughs> so yeah, this is where it's all gonna change. I'm excited. Grandma, can I rest now? I'm so tired. Kaine, over, over here! Don't give up! You're stronger than that! Don't you dare give up now! This woman is more trouble than she's worth. That's it! Come on! Okay, that's different. So I'm not pulling her out anymore. <gasps> Cause I don't exist anymore, right? Again. There's that dream again. Every time I wake up from it filled with pain and sadness. With this feeling like I've somehow forgotten something extremely important. When I look at my broken sword, it reminds me of my battle with the Shadow Lord. Somehow it's been three whole years since I saved Yona. That was supposed to be it. Goal achieved. Game over. But you don't remember, you know? Oh my god! Not exactly the restful sleep I was hoping for. Damn it. So, I play as Kaine now. 
Guess I'll go kill some shit. Okay, why not? Emil. <gasps> That's Emil's. Aww. So she still remembers Emil. Or Emil, as I like to call him. Okay, so what? Like, as you say, Kaine's human now. Like, you can see that from her arm and her booty. Like, as you say, like, what else is there to actually do now? Oh, this is gonna be really interesting. I don't know how long this is either, so... Even her on the loading screen, so adorable. Has much changed? Like, can I go inside? Obviously there's... Ooh. Come here, you annoying bastards. Cool. Yeah, so like, I wonder if she's allowed in the village. Oh gosh, every last one of you. Feels like there's a lot of shades around lately. Maybe I should check in on Yoma's village. Oh yeah! <laughs> That's so cool! I still can't believe that by killing these shades I'm killing like... people, you know? I'm killing humanity. So I'm actually gonna play Nira Talmata again after this, in my own time. I'm not gonna film it or anything. Um, and I'm excited now that I've got a lot more of the story. Gosh, she controls so nicely. Ah, so good. And then she Naruto runs! I love it. So, I don't know if there's much point in killing all of the shades. Obviously, this is the end of the game anyway. Die, damn you! Die! Oh no! That's not good. Hey, get back! It's dangerous here! <laughs> Have you met me? It's my line, buddy. So, I wonder if I have a better reputation. At all. Because obviously I'm human now. You're welcome. Thanks for the save. Shades have been on the rise around here lately. Now go home. Oh, believe me, I want to. The thing is, I've got a job to take care of. Oh no, here we go. See. We haven't been able to get in touch with anyone in the Forest of Myth. Somebody's got to go over there and make sure they're all right. And that someone is you. You will make it ten feet before some shade mauls your ass. I'll go. What? Really? Oh, man. Thanks a million. Oh, wait. You should take these. I'll wait for you around here. And thanks again. No problem. I remember when I first started playing this game and we we came out to here, the planes and all of that. And I remember thinking like, oh, this game is awfully like, the areas are small. But actually, it worked out fine. Like, I don't feel that way anymore, you know? I think a lot of the criticisms for this game there was a lot of people that just felt like it was constant go here, hand an item, go here, hand an item and I guess it, it was um, I didn't do a lot of the that stuff on camera I did all that like in my own time so I don't mind that kind of stuff but I can understand where people are coming from if they really don't like that I would say that the story of this game is fantastic but if you're not into that kind of stuff I don't know if you would like this game very much, like gameplay wise. So, 
Is that Kaine? Like, Yona's the one writing the loading screens just now, but she's talking about Kaine. Hey, anybody home? Can I save it? Oh, okay. Interesting, okay. Whoa! What the hell happened here? Shit. No! They're all dead? <sighs> what about the guy that used to sit there? Oh. That looks fun. Um, what are those things doing here? Wait, did they kill the villagers? What the hell? And they just keep coming. Come on, more? Ugh, they just keep on coming. Why would robots be coming out of a place like that? What the hell? So we're actually going in the tree. Okay. I can't believe everyone's dead in the forest of the myth. See, I always knew this tree was bad news. I knew. Oh my goodness. What the hell's going on here? What's a place like this doing inside a tree? I'm trying to remember the stories of the tree. Where it's like discussing the memories and things like that. But I feel like it'll tell me all about it very, very soon. Welcome to the sea of humanity. Welcome to the cemetery of sin and punishment. The hell? You are a replicant. A manufactured existence. Individual name, Kaine. Who are you? Show yourselves. Remain calm. Do not be hasty. Soon we shall meet. <laughs> no, I'm a human. Creepy little freaks. Like, I'm a human now. Right? That's what I thought anyway. Is it time to be more confused again? Ugh, this game. I'm not expecting either a happy ending. Understand a damn thing you're saying. Observations of you have been recorded as well. already. Do not be hasty. Soon we shall meet. Soon we shall meet. <laughs> it's interesting that like that is obviously what has happened. But it's still giving me like such a nice music here. And it's like this isn't gonna be good. You know it. Like, we literally caused the end of the world. I said that to you guys. So surely they're gonna want to kill me. Because I did all this, yeah? Okay, it's giving me a lot of uh, defensive things right here. Uh, 
Um, oh, how nice of you to join us. Yes, how nice of you to join us. <laughs> we are the administrator. up with these freaks. Entertaining enough for you? I mean, I just feel like we're going straight into their trap, but in the same breath, like, I want to know. Insulted. It matters not how many copies you destroy. They will simply disperse and immediately reconstruct themselves. There is still much fun to be had. God damn, you're annoying. I want to tear these freaks apart, eat the pieces, and shit them into a trash can. <laughs> Vice would be happy with that one. Fuck 
years. <sighs> Just my imagination. Is that a doorway? Beyond here lies that which was lost. A final hope for you to reclaim. God, I feel confused but like more confused than before whoa what is this place at least there don't seem to be any bad guys around Emil I didn't get a chance to ask yet with all the fighting and shit but what happened to you back then and where have you been and why the hell do you have four arms <laughs> kind of I look it's going to take way too long to get into all that now. Fine. I was worried, you know? Aw, kind eh? But look at us now. Team Camille, back together again. Uh, Camille. Yeah, I guess so. Aw. I love you. <sighs> Like, is he actually there, or... I don't know. Gosh, everything's so plain. Kaine, I... I feel like I've forgotten something really important. Tell me about it. You too? Yeah, I can't really describe it. But it's like my mind is filled with this weird fog. I think I... Made a promise to somebody? Like, that we would go eat something delicious? <laughs> well then, we'll just have to get those memories back. Yeah! So this area here is actually the Shadow Lord. I 
just I'm in awe of this game. Like I don't know what to think right now. Like everything is I feel an enormous I don't know. magical power ahead. So up in the just air. Don't do anything rash. Got it? Got it. Same goes for you, Kaine. I don't want to be alone anymore. <laughs> yeah. You won't be. Not for as long as I am here. Okay. My boy. Is this... the Shadow Lord's castle? Kaine, I'm sensing some powerful magic up ahead. Well, let's go take it out then. This is a very special place. To you and to the world. Yeah, this is where it all ended. That is the core frame of this forest, within which a great variety of information is stored. Inside it exists all that this world is, including the memories you have lost. Don't get to decide who lives and who dies. That voice. It's the one from my dreams. I've heard that voice before. These are your memories. I'm not going to be You made it this far because you were with us, Kane. Damn it. What is this? Do you suffer? I am pained. Shut the fuck up! <laughs> you pathetic fucking shit horse! Just die already! I just don't know how this is gonna end. What? Where am I? Emil? Emil? These are your memories. These are your records. This is your world. Like, there's not much here. What the hell is this? Sweet memories from deep within. have said since we started this goddamn adventure. It's interesting because I clocked very early on that the shades were humans. I don't know how, but I just did. I think it was like the word thing where it's like the more shades you kill, the more words you were getting, and it was like, why words, you know? But yeah, it all makes sense now.
never satisfying killing anything in this game. Stop it, stop it, stop it! I kill shades. That's all there is to it. This is the deepest place in your memories. Memories you had sealed away. And this one is your worst memory. Will be the last time, hopefully. Oh my god. What the fuck? This is some twisted shit right here, and you're gonna pay! It's twisted, but it's also true. I won't lose to you. No oh, shit, I'm not gonna be able to read this, you guys. Well, I could try. Hopefully it's not too long. When Kaine's eyes flutter open, she sees a dozen villagers quizzically staring back. After a moment, she realizes she's collapsed on the ground, where sharp stones dig at her flesh like... Whatever, that's not important right now. She pulls herself to a knee before rising on unsteady feet and sparing a glance at her surroundings. The fuck? She mutters. What happened? 
Wasn't I just fighting shades? Her mind races as her heart gropes unconsciously for the blade that has been her constant companion for so very long. Though she can't explain it, it's clear she has somehow been transported to an entirely new world. Well, not entirely new. She recognises the hawk-shaped weather vane twisting slowly in the wind above her, as well as the small round homes with wisps of smoke drifting into the air. And of course, there are villagers currently staring at her with a mixture of fear and disgust. Oh yes, they are a familiar sight indeed. She's in the 80. She is home. Is something the matter, girl? Is that her grandma? Kaine spins around at the voice and sees a woman ravaged by time. Her narrow hips barely seem strong enough to hold her body upright, while the shawl wrapped around her thin frame appears ready to fall apart at any moment. Grandma? Is that really you? Her grandmother's eyes grow almost comically wide before blinking several times in succession. What's wrong, you fool girl? Is your head lost in dreams? Dreams? Could this be a dream? But it feels so real. But she's dead. Grandma's dead. I watched that goddamn shade kill her. So if this isn't a dream, how the hell is she here? Unless those shades killed me too. That must be it. I'm dead. I'm dead. And this is... Oh, stop with that nonsense already. Kaini flinches as her grandmother raises a hand in the air, expecting pain to come as correction for her foolishness. But instead of a blow, her grandmother simply places the hand upon her granddaughter's cheek. The warmth of it instantly spreads from her cheek to her face before filling her entire body with a kind of beautiful light. What's wrong, girl? asks her grandmother. Are you upset? Do you want to go home? Kenny feels tears coming to her eyes and struggles to hold them back. Though she still has no idea what is happening, she knows one thing is for certain. This is her grandmother. Sorry, Grandma. I'm not sure where my head was at there. But I'll just make sure you keep it attached, her grandmother chuckles as she pulls her hand away. Maybe this is a dream. Or maybe I'm already dead. I don't know. Either way, I'm not alone. As long as grandma is with me, that's enough. Didn't I just tell you to stop spacing out, girl? Her grandmother says with a cackle. Here now, hold this. She hands Kaine a large sack filled to bursting with all manner of fruits and veg. Damn, Grandma, that's a lot. Well, it's important to treat yourself every now and then. Besides, these villagers may hate us, but the bastards are more than willing to take our money. We'll lend support as we can, even if they have to hold their noses while we do it. Her grandmother trails off as if trying to remember something, then slowly turns around. Well, what do you know? In all the excitement, I forgot to buy my medicine. A thin smile wavers on her face for a moment before vanishing into a lifetime's worth of crevices and wrinkles, causing Kaine to take a concerned step forward. No, Grandma, that's fine. You go home and rest. I'll get the medicine. Her grandmother hesitates, clearly trying to weigh her own need for rest against her granddaughter's odd behaviour of a moment before. Before she can start to argue, Kaini charges ahead, ignoring the small voice in her head that's telling her what a bad idea all of this is. Really, Grandma, it's fine. Go home. I got this. She pulls her grandmother's ancient wallet from her fingers, an act that requires a surprising amount of strength. Besides, you know how stubborn I am. Once my mind is set, there's no changing it. I wonder where you got that from. Seeing that further argument will be useless, her grandmother slowly turns and begins the long journey home. Kaini watches the figure recede from her vision, waiting for what seems like an eternity to ensure everything is all right. Once the frail shadow finally vanishes over the horizon, she turns on a heel and makes for the app of the, the chemist. Let's go for that. Oh, 
there, says the elderly chemist as Kaine enters the store. Here for Callie's medicine, are you? Though few villagers had ever bothered to learn her grandmother's name, she and the chemist were old friends. Perhaps, perhaps that was the reason he'd always showed her kindness when so many others did not. Uh, yeah, if it's not a bother. The shopkeeper immediately set about his work, deftly pulling bottles and herbs from the shelves and mixing them with a practiced hand. Soon, a particular smell begins to drift through the store, one that immediately reminds Kaine of her childhood. There you are, says the chemist, as he holds out a small cloth bag. Sorry for the wait. Oh, and say, that's a fine portrait you drew of your grandmother. Looks just like her, so it does. Honestly, I've never seen Callie so over the moon about anything. She brags about it every time she stops by. You saw that? Says Kaine, her eyes narrowing. Said portrait was something she had whipped up one day after getting her hands on some crayons, and to call it rough would be an act of pure generosity. The idea her grandmother was displaying it around town makes Kaine's stomach want to sink down to her feet before slinking off into a hole somewhere. You bet I saw it, the pleased chemist says. She brought it all the way here just to show me. My, but it's been a long time since I've seen something so wonderful. Kaine's mind begins to whirl. The picture was shit. She was sure it was shit. And yet... The man's reaction displayed the exact opposite opinion. Is he just being nice to me? The chemist, as if sensing her skepticism, doubles down. I could really tell you put your heart into it. It was simply wonderful. Um, thanks, offers Kaine, who just wants the entire conversation to be over. She briefly considers how she's going to make her grandmother cease her little travelling art show, but then realises that Train has likely left the station. Shaking her head to banish her increasingly shrill thoughts, she grips the bag of medicine tightly and turns to leave. But just as she reaches the door, she hears a loud thud from somewhere back in the shop. Kaine turns around to see the chemist crouching on the floor. Uh... Hey there, you okay? When the man does not reply, Kaine moves toward him. She assumes he just slipped on something, or perhaps hit his head on one of the low-hanging shelves in the crowded shop. But the moment she draws close to him, she hears him begin to scream inside her mind. Oh my god, <laughs> where is my leg? Panicked Kaine looks down and discovers that the man's leg is gone. Help me, screams the voice in her head. Help me. As Kaine looks on in horror, the man's fingers begin to shimmer and vanish. He reaches out for her with his other hand, only to find that it, too, is no longer there. Soon, his arms go. Then his legs. Then the side of his face warbles out of existence, causing a stray eyeball to roll out of its socket and onto the floor. Heal, says the voice if it could even be called that anymore. A moment later, what remains of the pitiful shopkeeper collapses into a heap of ash, releasing a small puff into that suddenly silent air. As Kaini stumbles back in horror, she hears a cataphony of terror rising up outside. Oh God, what's happening? My arms, where are my arms? Kenny bursts out of the store and finds herself in a nightmare. Homes slough on the side of cliffs, taking out pieces of scaffolding as they fall. Screams echo out everywhere, creating an opera fit for hell. Villagers run in mad circles before exploding into dust, their clothing drifting this way and that as it floats untethered through the air. As she stares at the scene, wide-eyed, a single thought suddenly inserts herself into the forefront of her mind. Grandma. Kaini breaks into a run. The crumbling world around her is suddenly forgotten. She leaps from one piece of falling debris to the next, using them as stepping stones to cross a world that is increasingly losing cohesion. As she continues her mad dash, flecks of ash are blown into her face. 
her mouth, her eyes. Buildings and people all reduced to so many cinders in the wind. Soon she arrives at her childhood home. It was once a place filled of precious memories, a place she regarded as an oasis in an increasingly mad world. But now, it's nothing but a pile of ash. As she gapes unbelievingly at the sight, a faint sound suddenly reaches her, her ears. She's alive. Grandma's alive. With a speed born out of panic, she leaps into the giant pile and begins shoving it aside. It stings her eyes and burns her lungs, but she continues on, heedless of the danger. Finally, she pulls a small blackened form out of the darkness. Come on, Grandma, she whispered. We're getting out of here. Without waiting for a response, Kaini gathers her grandmother in her arms and breaks into a mad run, hoping to escape the chaos. But the wave of ash has become a tsunami, and before she can make it more than a few desperate steps, it reaches out with a cruel hand and overwhelms them. Kaini stumbles and falls, sending her and her grandmother tumbling into the ashes. One glance at her feet is enough to reveal the culprit. Her right leg has vanished at a point just below the knee. Oh, it'll take more than that to stop me, mutters Kaini as she slings her grandmother over her shoulders and begins to crawl away. We're gonna make it. We're gonna live. As she crawls, her grandmother seems to grow lighter, as if trying to magically reduce the weight of her own burden. And as Kaini continues to struggle, she hears a small, soft voice enter her ear. Thank you, Kaini. As the voice drifted away, the last of the pile of ash that used to be her grandmother drifts away on a soft breeze. Kaini screams an impossibly sad and lonely sound and begins trying to pull the ashes back to her. This can't be happening. But the ashes are mingling with all the other detritus from the collapsed village and soon she can no longer tell which particles belong to who. As she continues her frantic digging, her hand suddenly closes around a piece of soft ragged fabric, her grandmother's shawl. I knew this place was a lie. I knew it and I still couldn't do anything. I couldn't save anyone. I couldn't even escape. I just felt the peace in the place and I accepted it. I wanted it. That's why there was nothing there. No reason to live. No goal. No anything. So this is why I'm... Sorry. Suddenly a new voice enters Kaine's world. I say, can you hear me? Oh yeah. After a moment, the voice calls out again, louder, clearer. Now then, you wish to get him back, hmm? Him? replied Kaine. Who are you talking about? Oh, for the love of all the heavens, I always did know you were a handful. Though the voice immediately begins to grate on Kaine's nerves, there is something else as well. A kind of warmth. Almost a familiarity. <laughs> Are you truly so daft that you have already forgotten one of your beloved traveling companions and friends? Says the voice, which causes something deep in Kaini's memories to surge forth. That's right. I had friends, and I was fighting to get one of them back. At this realization, a blinding radiant beam of light shoots out across the ash-covered world. Covering her eyes with one trembling hand, Kaine reaches for it. Do hurry back now, hussy. Oh, vice. What is the matter? Do you still not remember? You have not time to become lost in your thoughts. 
Right. Yay. Okay. Let's get him back. Let's do this. Use my magic to topple the beast. I presume you know how to use magic, yes? Then give us a show, hussy. I don't need your help to take out this goddamn fuck waffle. Fuck waffle. Power to knock the creature down with magic. Well done. Now clobber the beast. Let's fuck it up good. Shit, this thing is tough. Let the next onslaught be our last. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, advice. Yes. Thanks. Have you been in your cups again? Fuck your face. Ah, that's more like it. What you are attempting is extremely. Cram it, Book. I'm doing this. I see. Waver before mere illusions again, hussy. Don't worry. I'll do what needs to be done. It still doesn't change the fact, though, that I am killing humans. made up my mind. Nobody tells me what to do. I swore I would be a sword. I swore that I would be your sword. Do you hear me? So I am going to get you back, and I don't care what it takes. Who the fuck do you think you are to just up and disappear like that, huh? I'm the one who gets to decide what my life means to me. It's my life. And I'll do whatever I want with it. So quit wasting time like a brainless fuckwit and get your ass back here now! Is it possible though? Like, 
Can it be done? Uh oh. Yeah. Obviously. Okay. Oh, crap. Okay. Ah, let's be honest. A boy Susie wasn't nearly as cool as the, the original. Susie! I had a lot of stuff that you took off of me. It's funny that it goes through like all the individual ones. Guess it's just showing you that we are giving you back everything, you know? Is that what I should do? Okay. I leave the rest to you. Come on, give me a happy ending. journey may have been meaningless. Our past may have been a mistake. But we're not going back. Even if this world comes to an end. Because this... This is the world with the people we cherish. weird that it went back to the original near and not older near because that just looked like she was hugging an underage boy and it was a little bit weird <laughs> just throwing it out there yeah I was like I didn't think she was in love with the younger one I thought she was in love with the older one but hey let's not get into that that's like dangerous territory but uh, so what is there to say? Our selfishness basically doomed humanity. And that is just the way it is. Um, it's not great, obviously, but we all know how it goes in uh, Need Automata. And if you don't, you should play Need Automata. Absolutely phenomenal game. So I'm just gonna wait until the end of the credits in case there's something else. Oh, nice. A parting greeting has been added to the options menu. Oh, I think, is there a trophy for that last weapon or no? Um, 
So let's just have a look and see what I'm able to even... Okay. Um, Lost Shrine Roof. Okay, so I'm not going to go get it just now. Well, you guys, this is the end of Near Replicant. I have loved this game. I'm 81% into my platinum of this game, so I'm going to work on that in my own time. On this main channel, I'm not really doing gaming anymore. If you want gameplay stuff, you have to head on over to Suzy Lou Gameplay. I do, however, have plans to finish up games that are not complete on this channel. So I think the next one I'm going back to is Crash. I uh, Crash 4. I don't know about Ratchet and Clank yet. Um, I'll see. I was kind of just maybe going to play that in my own time, but... I'll see how I get on. Let me know if you want me to do Ratchet and Clank on my channel and I can just like finish it up or whatever. So yeah, I think we'll be going back to Crash 4. I hope you guys are looking forward to that. Thank you so much for all the love on this series. It's been a long one. I'm still suffering. My face is killing me right now. So I'm gonna go and take a break and whatever. And yeah, I hope I can recover soon so that I can get back to finishing up these games properly because talking for an hour is it's taken it out of me so nightmare absolute nightmare but thank you so much for sticking with me for watching my videos for subscribing to my channel and if you're not subscribe and i will see you all in the next video bye